here we have a HP Pro Book 470. We're going to open up and explore the insides. First, we're going to remove the back panel. There's one screw holding the back panel down. This screw does not come off. By removing this back panel, you get access to the hard drive and two RAM slots. So now that we remove the screw, you have to slide it down to remove the panel. Here we have the hard drive, the RAM slot 1, RAM slot 2. There's four screws holding the hard drive down, and this is the only hard drive in the laptop. It is a 2.5 inch hard drive. Now you have to slide it to the right or left, whichever side you're on. And there's a tab here, it helps you lift up the hard drive. So now I'm just going to put back the hard drive to show you how to put it back. You can pull on the tab to remove or push back in the hard drive, but I don't recommend it since um, it normally rips. Next we're going to remove the RAM. You remove the RAM by pushing the two sides apart and the RAM pops up. So there's only two RAM slots in the laptop, therefore it's maximum 16 gigs. 8 gigs in each slot and two slots. Next, we're going to remove the other access panel. This gives us access to the wireless card and to remove the DVD drive. Same with the other panel. The first quick access panel, you slide it down to remove it. We're gonna remove the wireless card. To remove the wireless card, there's two screws holding it down. Remember to re remove the antenna cables as well. So after removing the two screws, the wireless card pops up like the RAM. So just wob wiggle it out and it comes out. I'm just going to put the wireless card back as I do not need to remove it. And you don't need to remove it to disassemble the whole laptop. Just don't put the antennas back as I'm um, removing the motherboard. The wireless card will be removed and the antenna will be stuck to the base. So there's one screw holding the DVD drive down. After you remove the screw, you, you can slide the DVD drive out. So now that we remove the screw, you can slide the DVD drive out. Next, we need to remove the battery if you haven't removed it already. So we need to remove all the screws on the back now. I'm just pointing out to you where all the screws are. So please note, after you remove all the screws, you're going to have to open your laptop and remove the keyboard, as there's a few screws under the keyboard as well. So what you see me doing is they got screw hole covers. You need to remove these plastic screw hole covers or rubber screw hole covers so you can remove the screw. You also have to note that some of the screw hole covers are different size. 
So make sure you, when you put it back, you put the right one back in the right hole, or else it looks weird. Now that we removed all the screws, we need to flip it over over to the keyboard, as we need to remove the keyboard as well. So to remove the keyboard, you push it down, and it comes up. Be careful not to just rip out your keyboard, as there's cables attached to it. So we're going to remove all the tabs and all the cables. So the first tab you saw me remove was the power on button. The second tab you, um, thing you saw me remove was the speakers. Third one is the other side of the power button. One is the mouse trackpad. One is the fan. So there's a few screws I'm just pointing out. We're going to remove all these screws. You know which cable goes where, looking at its direction if you follow the cable path.
Now that we removed all the screws, we need to get our prying tool to pry out the sides. I'm just going to close the laptop and put it on my lap. It's easier to pry than me leaning over the table. I've now finished finished prying it, so you just lift it up. And also remember to remove all your tabs if you haven't removed them. Else you're going to have a struggle to remove them. So here is the CPU, and here's the graphic card. This is the fan. So there's a few screws we have to remove, and cables. So here there's monitor cable, that's the hard drive extension cable. Oh, hard drive extension board. There's a few screws you have to remove off the motherboard which I'll point out to you while I'm removing it. The reason why there's extensions boards in it is because they use the same motherboard in this laptop for the 15 inch model as well. And therefore to fit in the 17 inch casing, they need extensions or the hard drive doesn't fit and the CD drive doesn't fit. This is a common thing with the lower end laptops where they use the same motherboard in two laptops. So now we're going to remove the fan, remember to unplug it. I already removed the screw of the fan as you saw when I removed with the motherboard. You get, this is the monitor cable or the LCD cable you also need to remove. This is the power cable. Remember. As you can see, since I have removed most things off the bottom, the screen is actually heavy and it makes the laptop tilt backwards, so be careful of that. The cable you just saw me remove is the speaker cable. So here we go. Here's the motherboard. And that's just the hard drive extension board. So I'm just pointing out the heatsink. So the CPU is there and the graphic card's there. That's the BIOS battery. So to remove the heatsink. There's all these screws here. So every time you remove the heating, you need to replace the thermal paste. Don't be cheap on thermal paste. Thermal paste is really important. A tube of thermal paste probably only costs $10 of what I'm using. It's called Noctua NTH5 and can be used around 15 times. With the screws on the heating, there's actually numbers next to it telling you which screw to screw in first. The idea of this screw is when you put the thermal paste back on the C uh, CPU and graphic card, when you screw it in, the screws will spread out the thermal paste evenly. So now that we removed all the screws, the heating comes off. We need to remove the old thermal paste. So I'm going to use a tissue to remove it. You don't need any special li liquids or solutions or even cloths to remove it. It's a good thing if you can use a cloth because tissue generally breaks down and it drops on your motherboard. This is why I'm not cleaning the heat sink over the motherboard.
The idea is to clean it as best as you can. If you if you can't get 100% clean, it's not a big deal. But yes, try not to clean your heatsink on top of your motherboard as sometimes there's pieces that drop down. So the idea of cleaning your CPU and graphic card is um, to get the top clean as possible. You don't have to clean the sides if you can't, but try your best. If you can't do it, it's not a big deal. As long as the top is shiny and clean, that's good enough. I'm just lifting up the motherboard as um, some part of the film paste dropped down and is wedged between something. So here we go, I cleaned off everything as it's easier to clean on my lap. And here we have our Noctua NTH1. So we want to put half a rice grain of film paste on each chip. So each chip is each shiny surfaces surface. So on the graphic card, there's two shiny surfaces, and on the graphic card, there's only one. So now that we just align our heating, here is the screw numbers. As you can see, I'm just pointing out to you. Next to screw, there's numbers. If you can't see, it, you'll be able to see it on your own one. So the idea of the heatsink is just to align it with the screw holes and when you screw it in, the heatsink will spread out the film paste evenly. That's basically it. Thanks for watching. You can continue watching if you want to see the reassembly process, but that's it for now.